do you want to eat a baby tomato? My name is Daniel and I'm from Canada. My wife is from Beijing. We met in Canada and moved here. We are now raising two little children, a four-year-old and a one-year-old. My relationship with my wife's family is, I would say now, it's pretty good. It took a lot of work to try to figure out the different relationship dynamics in Chinese families. I would say in Canada it's far simpler. It's not so formal. I remember the first time I met my mother-in-law, I opened the door and everyone said hi and I put out my hand to shake her hand and I said, Ni hao, wo jiao Daniel, nin jiao shen ming And she looked at me like she was really confused and I called her by her name every time I saw her for about two weeks. One thing about Chinese culture is you, you do not address your in-laws by name. I learned later that I'm supposed to call her ai, auntie. As soon as my wife told me these things, you know, the next day I'd call her auntie and my father-in-law shushu, and then you've got la la and la ye. And in Canadian culture, generally, you would not really change your behavior depending on the nature of the relationship you have with the person you're speaking with. But in China, in Chinese culture, every single person you deal with and interact with, there's an implicit relationship between you and that person, and the nature of the relationship defines how you need to behave towards that person. And if you violate that, you're going to be considered uh, either rude or just strange, perhaps. I'm sure your dad made this. He sometimes doesn't understand or doesn't even agree with certain behaviors, but he does it anyway. He learns how to do it, and he gives himself a little more time afterwards to try to understand it. So that was really helpful for me, and I'm forever grateful about that. I visited China once in 2001, working at a school. And my boss invited myself and a friend over to his home for Spring Festival. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't realize how important it was as a holiday. Over the years, I've kind of figured out the background and the history and the significance. So I participate more and more, especially in the, in the big feast, the big dinner that we have. I like to go shopping. I like to contribute. I like to make a few Western-style dishes that my family might like. Every year we like to make a formal menu, like something you'd see in a restaurant. And each year we have at least maybe 20 or 25 dishes on the menu. And then we lay them all out on the table and everyone takes pictures because it's really grand. I really enjoy preparing for that. And then of course eating it. Hey, Lao Ban, we are like a champion. Okay, Chang Sai Lao Biao. Yao. Oh, Lei. Good. 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 My primary motivation was to communicate with my in-laws and my wife's family. If I can't speak Chinese properly, I'm worried that my in-laws will never know what kind of son-in-law they actually have. But I had another reason, and that was in, in, when I was in Canada, I, I would consider myself a rather independent and competent person. I didn't like the idea of not being competent in Beijing. Living in Beijing is extremely convenient and uh, I, I just like the lifestyle that you can have here. Uh, I love the locals, the, my neighbors are great. We have everything within a two minute walk or five minute walk. Now it's been almost 10 years and we have no plans to go back. Our families are here, our kids are here, we're very comfortable and very happy. That is so silly.